Hello and welcome to the Brazil MBA guest. I have been talking about business analysis with some experts in this area on different aspects of business analysis. If you haven't had the chance to see it, take a look on the channel and see what is best for you in your particular uh, profession or what your particular usage. Today, I want to talk about business analysis in a wider view. Uh, We're going to talk about business analysis as a mindset. And for that, I have the honor to have with me the president and CEO of the International Institute of Business Analysis, Mr. Delvin Fletcher. Hello, Delvin. Thank you for coming. Hello, Fabrizio. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be with you. Oh, it's totally my pleasure. Delvin, I do have a question for you today. My question is, should business analysis be promoted as a mindset available to anyone? Yes. The quick answer to your question is yes. And, and, and the, 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 the temptation is to say yes, but. But instead of saying yes, but, I'm going to say yes, and. In other words, the mindset is critically important but not in and of itself sufficient. And, and maybe I can illustrate this best kind of with a, with a simple story or a simple analogy. If, if, if you and I were, were hiking guides and, and we, you know, we enjoyed that pursuit and, and, and one of us fell and cut our finger or our arm, we'd, we'd both know how to put a Band-Aid on that and, and heal it and clean the wound. And, and maybe if we were a little more experienced and one of us fell and broke our leg, we could do a makeshift splint to help, you know, protect it while we took one of us to the hospital, whoever had done that, you know, and, and maybe if we, we, we were guides in a park and that was our job, we would learn more about how to do splints or how to clean wounds or how to do things like that. And, and in that progression, we need the mindset to heal. We need the mindset to help. We need the mindset to, to stop injury from getting worse. Uh, and but in each of those progressive situations, we need more skill. We need more practice, right? But none of that would equip us to repair that broken arm, right, or that broken leg, or to or to deal with a serious wound. For that, we would need medical training. We would need a lot of experience. We would need mentoring. We would need all. Of, so you know, so so in each of that com each part of that conversation, uh, the the mindset is important and in some ways available to anyone if we're willing to embrace it. So I can learn how to clean a wound. Um, I can learn how to build a splint as could you. But if, if either of us wanted to learn how to be a surgeon, it's a different conversation. It's a different level of commitment. It's a different level of work. It's a different investment of time and energy and, and, and things like that. So everywhere in that analogy, if it kind of makes sense, the mindset is important. And without the mindset, to some degree, I'm just a method person, right? You know, you know, if I'm a surgeon and I don't care about healing my patients, somewhere in there, I'm probably not going to be very impactful, not very effective. In fact, I probably can't be a surgeon unless my mindset is good, is is focused on on healing, on health, right? But but each of those little examples, ranging from putting a bandaid on a cut to to repairing a badly broken leg that requires intense skill and experience and wisdom requires an appropriate mix of, of investment, commitment, skill, experience. And I think, you know, to the extent that any analogy applies to a different situation in business analysis, we kind of have the same sort of thing, which is there, th there's a huge universe of, of opportunity and experience in the, the, the marketplace that we work in globally. And in some cases, the right answer is to build deep, impactful skill with a lot of training and experience so that you can teach, so that you could mentor, so that you can lead centers of excellence, so that you can guide strategy, so that you can um, deal with complex change leadership, so that you can be the right kind of input into, into critical pieces of software development, or on and on and on. We could have lots of examples. But on the other side, there are, there are all kinds of opportunities for good business analysis mindset connected to the right set of skills or experience or practice put into the moment at what at the level of depth that is needed to solve whatever the business problem is that you know that, that comes to the table at that point in time 
I like it very much this this analogy that you made, uh, talking about this healthy mindset or something like we have to treat someone who is had an injury or, or, or a broken arm or something like that, and, and and the business analysis mindset because with the healthy sector with this healthy mindset we were able to create very different kind of health health professionals like you said you have the medical and even in the medical you have the cardiologist you have the pneumologist mm -hmm. you have uh, the ophthalmologist so a lot of doctors and you have physiotherapists you, you you have people working in different areas like nutrition and so you have a lot of people using the same mindset if they are not applying the mindset if they're not trying to make people healthier they're not doing well their their jobs so so, right. so the mindset is something bigger than the practice that they are applying and then business analysis i see that business analysis have different professionals doing business analysis as well a lot of them are called business analysts but some of them are not even called business analysts like we have uh, business architectures we have product owners we have people working in project management but they are they all have the same mindset. I would like to hear from you. What do you think is in this mindset? What unites all those professionals in the same mindset that we call business analysis? How would you define that? Do you have a definition for that? I don't know if I have a definition. I think some of your writing in, in the LinkedIn article captures that. But I would say that the 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 most fundamental driving principle maybe is 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 an orientation to a business outcome or what we now sometimes call an enterprise outcome the business outcome is sort of the term that iiba has used for many years and by that by that we mean that the connection between work and purpose uh, and, and, it, and it's it at the sim, at its simplest level that's what unifies organizational objectives and the work that that is done in business analysis because every enterprise has a set of purposes, uh, you know, wh whether they realize it or not. You know, some of them are 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 very simple, like to make money. Right? Some of them are much more altruistic, like to do good, right? But but every enterprise, whether it's a commercial business or or a government or an institution or an academic enterprise, every organization has purpose. Um, the the smarter ones know what that purpose is, are constantly challenging it, are refining it, are building it. And I think I think business analysis is at its best when we can up, we can connect skill, technique, uh, the work that we do with those purposes in effective ways. Which means a couple of things. It means we have to know enough about what that purpose is. It means we also have to know how to be the bridge at times between purpose and our work so that the work is, is challenged by, refined by, made accountable to, um, impactful towards, you could keep talking about, you know, adjectives like that. In other words, it's, it's the connection between the, the method and the day-to-day -day that we do and what those purposes are. And I think, you know, COVID has, has really um, put, a sh put a spotlight on a lot of that in many enterprises because it, it either made their purpose and the way they were achieving it very clear or it challenged it. In some cases, it did both, right? Some of it was in very basic things like, are you really focused on your customers? Many organizations have been challenged by that because, because when, you, when, when COVID forced everybody to kind of be remote, it forced a lot of processes to become online. It took human interaction away and made it something different. It became really, really clear which organizations were really rigorously focused on what their customers needed and which ones were now that wasn't a new issue i think COVID just accelerated it right but i think that's one example where 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 the 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 mindset of business analysis and and the work that we do can be really really impactful if we can figure out how to connect those things but that also means that we have to understand the businesses that we work in not just the methodologies that we are practicing and Perfect. i think it means a number of other things as well I like this, this vision about connecting the purpose of the organization with the practice of the organization. And it seems that this mindset should be available to anyone or, or, or for or anyone working in an organization. Everyone should have this mindset. And the final question I wanted to, to bring to you is how IIBA as an international association for 
business analysis pr practitioners. How can IIBA support those who want to develop this mindset, uh, independently of what they're doing or what their job function is? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question, and, and I'll give you a few answers, and there's probably a few more. Well, one of them is is trying to provide equipping journeys for both the, the let's call it the, the the depth side, but you know ultimately the CBEP, you know, credential that that sort of IIBA was founded on on creating, which is the the hardest one to achieve, and the one that sort of represents to some degree accomplishment in 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 the deeper side of business analysis practice. So I think part of it is, is create, is maintaining um, that opportunity for practitioners who want to go deep into technique and method and capability. Uh, and there's still many of them all over the world, but it's also to create a, a parallel channel or, or, an, or an additional channel. And, and this is something that I'm I'm proud to have inherited from some of the people who went on before me, a lot of the work that Ken Fulmer did in the years before I came to IIBA was, was saying that's important and we need to continue to work at that. But there's also an, an equally important track that, or journey that we need to support. And that's what led to sort of the, the partnership with the Agile Alliance on, on Agile and some of the other work that's been done over the last four, four years. And, and, and really the objective there is to, is to create business analysis equipping and to some degree mindset in areas where the outcome is not necessarily business analyst as a job or business analyst as a profession, but it might be something else like product owner or cybersecurity and anal or, or business data analytics or you know other areas that, that, that may happen in the future. So I think it's, it's maintaining a focus on both of those two things so that one is not to the exclusion of the other. They're both important. They're both, I think, part of the future. I think the other comment I'd make is, is we really believe that a lot of the future impact of business analysis is in is in connecting with and listening actively and to, and to the extent that we can nurturing what we call internally ecosystems and ecosystems are really um, mechanisms or structures or whatever you want to call them where we're trying to bring professions and practitioners outside the business analysis space like say in IT or in data or in HR and help them understand where and how and why business analysis as both a mindset and some practices can bring value to the work that they are doing. And also ultimately corporate entities, academic institutions, governments. We have some very interesting conversations going on with a few governments entities in certain places in the world right now where their objective is to, is to develop deeper and more impactful skills inside certain sectors of their economy to help them grow, to help them do better work, to help them do things like that. And what we want to try and do, is we, it's, it's the synergy of bringing a lot of those things together. And some of it, a lot of it is, is, our, is the IIBA chapter network where you've got this opportunity for people to meet in safe places, to learn from their peers, to develop skills if that's their objective, or sometimes simply to deepen community. Um, and as you know, because you've worked very hard in in the in the Brazilian setting, right? The the that community to some degree is is the core of that work going forward. One of the things we're trying to do a better job of in the future than maybe we've done in the past is 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 create the connections around that so that we can bring enterprises to those chapters, so that we can help governments a little bit understand where we can provide some value, so that we can teach uh, what we think that mindset is to HR professionals in places, and that will help us ultimately in in recruitment and things like that. And I think we could go on and on, but there's a lot of really interesting conversations going on that I hope we'll be able to bring to, to some fruition to sort of provide a, a, a more accelerated answer to your core question over the, over the years ahead. Thank you very much, David. As a member of this ecosystem in different parts, I am a CBA, I am a chapter leader, I am a professor, and I am one who get this purpose of helping organizations to get better outcomes very seriously. I'm very glad that we had this conversation today and I thank you very much for sharing those ideas of the IIBA strategy with us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be with you, Fabrizio. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye, Delvin. Bye-bye.